This is Dale Cantrell with Meridable Holiness Church. I just wanted to make a short video today for you. I think it's pertinent to the times that we live in right now with the coronavirus and all the other things we're not able to meet. And um, so I'm going to be in the 27th chapter of Acts, the 13th verse, starting at the 13th verse. Going to give you a little background so we don't have to read so far. But um, Paul was a stood up before many rulers in this particular time he stood up before this ruler and he told this ruler that he appealed to caesar the ruler said i could have might have could have went let you go but you've appealed to caesar and that's where you're going to go so paul didn't know about ships and the shipman didn't know about god and paul told the shipman not to sell that ship but he thought he knew more and he did so I'm going to start at the 13th verse. And when the south wind had blew softly, supposing they had obtained their purpose, looking thence, they sailed close by Crete. Before this coronavirus started, we could go to church. Everything was great. We could be together. So the south wind was blowing softly. We took it that everything was okay. But then along came this coronavirus. Coronavirus. So that's the way it is. When things are going well with you, don't forget that uh, bad could get worse. So, and said, but not long after they arose, after they had uh, got comfortable in the soft wind blew and the wind blew softly, said, but not long after they arose against it, the tempestuous wind called Eurachlidon. And when the ship was caught up and could not bear up into the wind, we let her drive. Uh, they, they encountered a storm. Uh, today, we've got the coronavirus. Yesterday on Easter, we had um, a natural storm. If you knew that, if, if they told us that a natural storm was coming through here and you didn't pay any attention and you just uh, chose to ignore it, then it would be on you if any lives, your life or anyone else's was, was lost. He said, when a ship was caught and could not bear up into the wind, we let her drive. It reminds me... Um, I've been in driving in a car and running across a, a deep puddle and my car would hydroplane. And I must confess to you, I just took my hands off the wheel and said, Lord, help me. And somehow or another, it straightened up. Um, today, in this, we're going to have to take our hands off the wheel and depend on God to help us. They let her drive. And running under a certain island, which is called Clauda, we had much work to come by the boat, which when they had taken up they used helps undergirding the ship boy we need helps today helps are so vital um, jesus had 12 disciples moses had those elders we can't do it by ourselves we need helps when they had taken up they used helps undergirding the ship what does that mean i really don't know i think it's where they um they tied a, a cut cable or around the ship and drawed it up to keep the things from uh, busting into pieces. They, uh, and being exceedingly tossed with the tempest, the next day they lightened the ship. When I was reading this, I was in a storm and that was the first clue of what I needed to do. Just like this is talking about a natural storm, we're in a spiritual storm. And so if we can do what they did in this natural storm, it will help us in our spiritual storm. And uh, so he lightened the ship. That was the first thing I needed to do in my storm. I needed to lighten the ship. If I got a grudge, I need to throw it overboard. If I got a feeling against somebody, uh, Jonah, when he was in the bottom of the well, they had to throw him overboard to, to make the ship start sailing right. So they lightened the ship. Very first thing they did. That's the very first thing we need to do. And the third day we cast out with our own hands the tackling of the ship. What is that? I don't really know. I just think it's the thing that controlled the pulleys and the and um, and all that, the sails, so they could now we've thrown that overboard. So now it's like a sailboat, and that's probably what's going to help us if we can just get our hands off the wheel and let Jesus pilot the boat. And when neither sun nor stars in many days appeared, no small tempest lay on us, all hope that we should be saved was then taken away. 
do not lose your hope. Um, man can live without food for three or four or five days or whatever it is, uh, 50, 50 something days. Um, man can live without air for eight or nine or 10 minutes. Um, he can live without water three or four or five days, but you cannot afford to be without hope for one second. I've never been where I didn't see the sun or the stars or the moon or anything that he's talking about in here. Uh, but in that day, they needed that to navigate. They didn't have an onboard computer. They didn't have radar. So they needed that to navigate. Don't lose your hope. And after, and Paul told them that they, they, shouldn't have sailed. And he said, and now I exhort you to be of good cheer for there shall be no loss of man's life among you, but of the ship. For the, uh, that is really good news. I mean, I would just love it if I knew that there would be nobody else lost. And he told them they would need to be, they would have to be cast upon a certain island. But when the 14th night was come, as we were driven up and down in Adria, about midnight, the shipmen deemed that they drew near to some country and sounded and found it 20 fathoms and when they'd gone a little further they sounded again and found it 15 fathoms so this is telling me we're getting closer just like at a football field a 20 yard line of 15 to 10 you're getting you're getting closer well brother Dale I, I would do that but I'm afraid that instead of 2015 it would be 2025 well Bless God, at least you know that you need to turn around just like a GPS on a car says, recalculate, turn around. And fearing lest we should have fallen upon rocks, they cast four anchors out of the stern and wish for the day. How many times I've done that. Go to bed so troubled, I didn't know what I was going to do the next day. And I just dropped my anchor and say, Lord, just get me to the morning. And as the shipmen were about to flee out of the ship when they had let down the boat into the sea under color as though they would have cast anchors out of the fore ship, Paul said to the centurion and to the soldiers, except these be abide in the ship, you cannot be saved. Under color, they acted like they were going to stay on the ship, but all the time they were making plans to jump overboard. I see people today that act like that they're going to try to make it, but they're thinking in their heart, they're thinking in their mind, if this don't get any better, if, if this don't happen and that don't get any better, I don't know how long I can make it. I'm encouraging you and asking you during this time to please, please stay on the ship. Paul encouraged them to take meat. I'm going to flip on over here. And when he had thus spoken, he took bread and gave thanks to God in the presence of them all. And he had broken it. He began to eat like we do on the communion. There's one piece of bread, uh, there's a whole piece of bread, and we break it and divide it. Uh, if, if we didn't break it, we couldn't share it with everybody else. Uh, so I've been broken. I've made mistakes. And when somebody comes to me of our church and wants to know they've done this, now I'm not talking about a sin, but when they've made this mistake, uh, there's a little piece of me to go along they can, they can uh, sympathize, empathize with them. And then they're all of good cheer, and they took some meat. And when they were all in the ship, 200, three score and 16 souls, 276 souls, and not a one of them was lost. And when they had eaten enough, they lightened the ship and cast the wheat into the sea. This is the third time they've lightened the ship. They, they lightened it. Then they threw out the tackling, and now they've thrown out the wheat. It's a desperate situation. Um, desperate times call for des desperate measures. Different times call for different measures. If I told you that I heard of a woman throwing her baby out the second store window, uh, you would think that's horrible, and it would be. But if I told you that the house was on fire, now that's a different situation. Um, some people, they sit in church, uh, there's some people that's, that needs a blessing. They don't care if you shot, shot right on their pocketbook. They don't care how their nails look. They don't care how their hair looks. They just need a blessing. So when they had eaten enough, they lightened the ship. 
And when it was day, they knew not the land, but they discovered a certain creek with a shore into the which they were minded if it were possible to thrust in the ship. And when they had taken up anchors, they committed themselves into the sea and loosed the rudder bands and hoisted up the mainsail to the wind and made towards shore. And falling into a place where the two seas met, they ran the ship aground. That's desperate. And the fourth part stuck fast and remained unmovable, but the hinder part was broken with the violence of the waves. And the soldier's counsel was to kill Paul, kill the prisoners, lest any of them should swim out and escape. But the centurion, willing to save Paul, kept them from their purpose and commanded that they which could swim should cast themselves first into the sea and get to land. And the rest, some on boards and some on broken pieces of the ship. And so it came to pass that they were all escaped all safe to land. Uh, I don't know who's going to make it and who's not going to make it, but I know that if I stay on the ship, I'm, I can make it. If you're strong, it said let the strong bear the infirmities of the weak. Swim. If you see me come dog pedaling by, throw me a board and we can all make it. Uh, I've encouraged our church not to be on the me channel. And uh, to think of other people. Uh, Brother Harold Simmons told me that, and he was really sick. I, I don't know if any, hardly any of you know him or remember him, but he told me that when he got the feeling his worst, he went and tried to find somebody that was worse off than him. And when he left, he feel, felt better. And that's the way it is today. Think of somebody that you can call. Think of somebody that needs your help. Get your mind off yourself so much. That's my advice. That works for me anyway. I've never seen anybody that was thankful not make it so far. And I've never seen anybody that was not thankful make it. Uh, I told our congregation to, if they have an iPhone or some kind of smartphone, to set an alarm for three times a day that says, be thankful. If you're thankful, you can make it. Let's, let's all be thankful. Try to help somebody else make it. Um, I, I don't know much else to say to you, but I do know that we're in a storm, and I do know that we can get through this. I think that at the end of this thing, we can be like Joshua when he told them to take a stone from the Jordan, I think each tribe. And then when the, the children ask, what meaneth these stones that you could say we were bondmen in Egypt? If you need to, to, to take you some memories of this. You need to uh, remember this and never forget. That's the people that get in trouble. It's the people that forget. So uh, this actually, when we look back on it, the things that you uh, are, don't enjoy or wish wasn't that way, at the end of this thing, it can make you stronger. And um, I love all the children of God. I want to be a servant. That's That's what I want to be. Uh, there's not a traffic jam on the road to being a servant, but that's what I want to be. It said Jesus didn't come uh, to be ministered to, but to minister and give his life a ransom for many. There's joy in serving other people, and uh, that's what I want to do through, for the rest of my life. And I hope that in this video, or in, in person before this corona, and after the corona, when we get back in person, that I can help you. And uh, if, if you need me, call me. I love you all. Not only do I love you, I care about you.